Hey cheaters! Exciting updates this week. So we're hurtling towards the launch of Cheat Layer Desktop next month. And we got slightly delayed because last week we discovered a solution to our GPT-4 rate limit issues. So now finally all users have access to GPT-4 using a cool solution we found called OpenRouter. And however, the process of setting all that up delayed us by another week. And so this last week we had some important updates for um, integrating GitHub, uh, Vercel, uh, HubSpot, Salesforce, and also the ability to set up your own custom voices. And so pretty exciting stuff. I'll get into it right now. We've also switched into a new published format for these updates so that it's going to be easier and save us more time because we're in crunch time now. To clone your own voices, click Voice Lab, then click Add Generative or vo Clone Voice, then Instant Voice Cloning. Give it a name, upload an mp3 file that's about 3 minutes and under 10 megabytes, and then okay, click Add Voice. And that's it. Next, all you need to do is add your 11 Labs API key in the Agent Settings menu, and it'll add the new voice to your Settings menu. Okay, I've added my 11 Labs key, and as you, key, as you can see, it's now added Batman, Homer, and Joe Rogan to my custom voices list. Let's select Homer, and then try out some research agents with uh, the latest research. Let's see. Who are you? I'm an autonomous agent designed for research purposes. However, in the context of this scenario, I am representing the character of Homer J. Simpson, the main protagonist of the American animated sitcom The Simpsons. Uh, the research identifies three common modes of erratic behavior. For example, an agent might observe an easel while painting, but this observation is unlikely to prompt a reaction. The first is the challenge of synthesizing an increasingly larger set of memory, which affects the agent's ability to retrieve relevant information and determine the appropriate space to execute an action. For example, Stop. agents might enter a... Could you explain the research in the context of reflection? Research in the context of reflection is about an autonomous agent's ability to analyze and infer high-level insights from a set of statements or observations. In this case, the agent is given several statements about a person named Klaus Muller. The agent is then tasked to generate insights from these statements. These statements include information about his activities such as writing a research paper, reading a book on gentrification, and having a conversation about exercising. For example, from the given statements, the agent might infer that Klaus Simmler is dedicated to his research on gentrification. The process also allows the agent to reflect on previous reflections. This insight is then stored as a reflection in the agent's memory stream, along with pointers to the memory objects, the original statements that... Could you explain the research? to be focused on the behavior of autonomous agents in a simulated environment called Smallville. The agents are programmed to interact with each other in their environment and their behavior is analyzed for inconsistencies in areas of improvement. The research identifies three common modes of erratic behavior. One of these is the challenge of synthesizing an increasingly larger set of memory, which affects the agent's ability to retrieve relevant information and determine the appropriate space to execute an action. The research also discusses the concept of instruction tuning, which seems to guide the behavior of the agents to be more polite and cooperative. However, this can sometimes result in overly formal dialogues. The researchers also observe that the agents sometimes fail to understand certain norms, such as the fact that certain places close after a certain hour, or that dorm bathrooms are typically used by one person at a time. 
the researchers suggest that these issues could be addressed by adding these norms at the state of the locations. The research also includes examples of how the agents interact with each other. For instance, there's a dialogue between John and Eddie, where John asks about Eddie's music composition project. That's super interesting, and the research about reflection seems to indicate that consciousness may require more than one entity in the brain. Research indeed suggests that the process of reflection, as implemented in these generative agents, involves a complex interplay of different components. This could be seen as analogous to the idea of consciousness requiring more than one entity in the brain. In the context of the research, the agent's consciousness or self-awareness is achieved through a combination of memory retrieval, reflection, and planning. The agent's memory retrieval function allows it to recall past experiences <coughs> and information. The reflection function then processes this information, generating higher level abstract thoughts. Finally, the planning function uses these reflections Stop. to guide future action. All right, you guys get the idea. All users get access to this in the next auto update. We've had significant updates to the UI as well as we monitor the usage in Mixpanel and um, Hotjar just to see where people are getting stuck. So we're going to make it easy as possible. Uh, the agents themselves are also constantly learning daily now, especially now that free users can access agents. We just exploded in the learning rate. So, so agents learn in both the code and the capability dimension daily. And what that means is as free users, as all users test it, even if the overall goal for the agent fails, if any one of these steps succeed, it's going to store the code of the success, which means the next user who tries a similar solution won't have to regenerate tasks. That allows agents to constantly get better at solving these problems. But in the business and capability dimension, we're also giving agents memory, a global community memory data set that we're slowly growing over time, which means that they implicitly learn things like high converting copy and get better in these capabilities. Next, we're going to show off an exciting new feature, which we just got access to after integrating GitHub and Vercel, which allows us to instantly deploy products and not just build them in single phrases. You guys probably remember Live Mode that allow you to build websites, apps, functional tools, games, uh, and things like that, but that was only for front ends before. Agents took it a f step further and allowed you to build the back ends, but you still had to deploy it yourself. We've now integrated GitHub and Vercel to finally solve that problem. In the latest onboarding, you can even build functional tools like a uh, functional mortgage calculator, for example, and it actually works. And then now you have the ability to take any of these websites and instantly deploy them to Vercel, which is this serverless um, edge framework that's as fast as possible using something called Next.js as the technology. It's super cool. It allows users from previously, it used to take around five minutes to launch these apps on Vercel. That's pretty fast already. Now we've gotten it down to 30 seconds. <laughs> so I'm going to go over a quick example that allows you to even build your own chat GPT powered products. So all users get access to this in the next update. All you have to do is open Project Atlas <clears throat> and say something like, um, generate a chat GPT app that takes the user input and generates a relevant joke uh, called joke uh, GPT jokes GPT okay and after you've connected your GitHub API key and your Vercel API key, you'll actually have the ability to build entire products. So I'm going to go check my Vercel dashboard. You can see it now just launched a new project in Vercel. And since it's also connected to my GitHub, it's queued and just committed a new, uh, just submitted a new commit, which is now going to trigger a build. And then in about 30 seconds, it's kind of finished building this web app. And <clears throat> this web app, we actually, you guys might remember uh, when you used to, um, when we had this, had this tutorial built before that allow you to build a uh, chat GPT powered product in five minutes. We, we released it around the same time as our bootcamp. 
And that was pretty cool. It allowed you to build like a little chat GPT app uh, and had the streaming mode and all that stuff. So it is super uh, easy way to deploy your own chat GPT powered products. And the build has started. <clears throat> And in about 30 seconds, it's going to automatically build everything for us from that single phrase. <clears throat> and there it is. It's now built the app. We can open it. And then let's say something about dogs. Why do the dogs sit in the shade? <laughs> uh, rainy days. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to build another chat GPT powered app just to show you that you can basically build whatever you want. Uh, we'll also show you how to do this with the previous website builder where you used to download the website. You no longer have to upload that to WordPress or Wix. You can actually instantly publish it to uh, Vercel and it'll deploy to the internet. So let's say um, generate a chat GPT app takes the user input and provides derivational help and coaching to learn retirement and success and call it Coach GPT. <laughs> okay, this is one of the, actually the user requests from last week, and now it's gonna build us. It just uh, created a GitHub project for us. It forked the GitHub project, and then it created a it just deployed a uh, Vercel project, and now we've queued the build on the Vercel project. In just about 30 seconds, that's going to start. Actually, we can watch what it's doing. There we go, it's done. Okay, let's go to the deployment. Do we have a regular domain? There it is. Cool. Um, I just lost my job. <laughs> cool. It's providing coaching help. Wow, this is pretty detailed. Awesome. So you get the idea. You can now build any sort of chat GPT powered apps. We'll be giving you more templates to deploy using Vercel like this as easy as possible. And all the previous live mode websites that you built can now be instantly deployed to Vercel in a single phrase. Super exciting stuff. Finally, we've integrated HubSpot and Salesforce so you can maintain and watch the conversations that all your agents are having in parallel with customers and when they send an email it'll also instantly update the email in HubSpot and, and Salesforce as an email object in Salesforce and so I'm just gonna do a quick demo just to show you how that works so you can we made it very easy in the latest update to also trigger an email agent directly so if you click this button that makes it very easy to test emailing agents. You can schedule agents. Um, and then, of course, we have this new uh, way to trigger agents from webhooks and Postman. OK, so that agent, that I just emailed that agent. And it's now going to generate a response. And that response is going to be sent back to my email. But I just wanted to highlight how it's going to maintain that conversation in HubSpot as well, as long as you integrate HubSpot. Okay, so I asked it for a video. Looks like it sent me back a link to our demo video, just like I instructed it. And then, let's see, let's go back here to HubSpot. And if we check the emails, we can see now that I'm interested in a video. Sure, it sends the video. Pretty cool. So this allows it you to deploy agents much easier into your existing systems and, and seamlessly integrate with your existing sales team and organization. This, uh, what I recommend doing is 
um, allowing your sales team to set up the autoresponder so it just accelerates what they already do and they should just start seeing more of X what they already do so like hot leads sales demos whatever should start going up because it just replaces their responding does it faster for them and then I recommend if that works well also switch to the personalized outbound and you should start seeing double the reply rates at least next week we'll be focusing mostly on cheat layer desktop and this new semantic targeting using a new foundational model that we just trained ourselves that understands the underlying intent of targets such that they're robust to even future design changes i'm super excited for the next few weeks because we're finally going to complete a launch that we started almost a year ago. I remember talking about Project Atlas over a year ago when it was just just in simple tests that we were working on. And it's now finally almost complete and launched. Um, semantic targets will realize that original vision for super robust future-proof agents and making it easy as possible for completely non-technical people not only to build businesses but automate them in simple language. Super excited for the next few weeks, especially for our hackathon launch for Cheat Layer Desktop, so stay tuned. Thank you, cheaters.